Harris School. We thank God for another opportunity to be in his house. Beautiful song this morning. Holy Spirit, all flesh. Our Sunday school will now come to order. We thank God for another opportunity to be in his midst and among the living. Let us repeat the Apostle Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, as we come this out in the morning, Lord, we want to say thank you for another day's journey. Thank you for waking us up this morning, still clothed in our right mind and the reasonable portion of health, and a day, Lord, that you saw so fit to allow us to get up. And for that, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for being the God that you are, the creator and maker of all things. Oh, God, we give you all the honor and the praises that you would so rightly deserve. And now, Lord, create in us clean hearts. Renew a right spirit to serve you in spirit and in truth. For, oh God, we realize that it was nothing that we did, but it was for your amazing grace. And again, God, we say thank you. And now, Lord, as we are assembled here, look at us. Lord, don't allow us to leave this place the way we came in. Send a fresh anointing, God. A new attitude, a new walk of life, a new challenge to be inspired to read your holy words and apply it to our hearts. Bless every man, woman, boy, and girl. Oh, God, some is not as fortunate as we are. But, Lord, you love them anyway. Your words say you have no respect of person. And, Lord, we believe you for that. And then your words say you will supply all our needs. But we got to trust you. We got to put it all in your hands. And, oh, God, we ask that you give us the strength that when we are so weak, we will call out to you and say, Lord, have mercy upon us. Give us, show us the way. Then there, Lord Jesus, some child, Lord, some man, some woman, some boy, some girl, standing at crossroads in their lives. Oh, God, show them a light. Show them someone that can encourage them, that will pick them up, that will encourage them to say, weeping may endure for a night. But if you just hold on to God's, unchanging hand, he'll make everything all right. Oh, God, thank you this morning. Bless all our members here and there. You know what we need. You know what we stand in need of. Oh, God, Reverend Gladden, Reverend Sumter, Sister Kit, Brother Void, all members of the Mount Olive AME Church family. Oh, God, and the head of this flock, our pastor, First Lady Simpson. Oh, God, strengthen them where they're weak. Oh, God, help them to realize that somebody is watching them. But not only them, Lord, help us to realize that somebody is watching us too. And then there, Lord, when we have gone our last mile, 
said our last prayers. Let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our hearts, let it be acceptable in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray this morning. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank God for another opportunity just to be here in the midst. Our Sunday school lesson today, as we look and as we have progressed through this quarter, lesson number 12, May 21st, 2023. Ain't God a good God? I tell you. And our lesson title today, an Ethiopian officially baptized. The lesson scripture, come on in, that's okay. Good morning. Gotta pause until they get in place. God does not want us to rush through or leave anybody beside the way. Take time. Okay, our lesson scripture is coming from the book of Acts, the eighth chapter, 26 through the 40th. And the focus scripture is Acts, eighth chapter, 29 through the 40th. And the key verse, he commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and Enoch, went down into the water. And Philip baptized him, Acts 8th chapter, 38th verse, and that's from the key verses from the National Revised. But we're going to read King James, and our teacher will go to either one of the books to guide us through this lesson for this morning. And we thank God for that. Acts 8th chapter, 29 through 40. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And he said, How can I accept some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare the generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And Philip said, If thou believe with thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And he went down and rose into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip that a eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. And God spoke all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God before thee. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Hear what Christ our Savior says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 
On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Glory be to the Father and to thy to thy Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, I praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord God, I worship you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Lord God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord God, as we come before you this day, Father, we come humbly and we come obediently. We come in all humility before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, to acknowledge you, to exalt you, to extol you to lift and to glorify you for who you are. We thank you, Father God, for Jesus. We thank you for his life. We thank you for his death. We thank you for his burial. We thank you for his resurrection. We thank you for his ascension. We thank you for his exalted position seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, where he ever lived to intercede on our behalf. We thank you, Jesus, for being our high priest, for being our intercessor, for being our advocate. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the great works that you did on the cross. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who indwell us. Precious Holy Spirit, thank you for who you are. We welcome you. Thank you for using this temple. Thank you for using this vessel. Thank you for using this instrument. Thank you for using this tabernacle for the glory of God. And we thank you this day for your very present here in Mount Olive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen and amen. I, uh, first thing I want to do is I want to clarify something that I said last week that if you look, you didn't find it. I said in, when I said to you, neither give place to the devil. I said it was in Philippians 4 and 27. That was not right. There's no Philippians 4 and 27. But there is a Ephesians 4 and 27. That's what I was referring to. And <laughs> James said that in James 3 and 2, he said that if any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Amen. You understand? I make mistakes. <laughs> I do. <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you a little, first of all, before we start on the scriptures, I want to give you a, 
a little, I have to say this first. Pastor, that lesson you taught on Wednesday night, when I left the church, that message was carrying me home. It just stayed in my spirit, and I knew that that was something that I needed to know. And I thank God for that teaching on Wednesday night. Now, I want to give you a little background into Philip. Now, there was, at this time, when the church had first started, and, and there had been some murmuring and disputing against the Gleaser and the Hebrews because they were being neglected in the daily administration. So the apostles had called the 12, the, the 12 apostles had called the multitude unto them. And when they called them to them, they told them that they didn't think it was right for them to leave the word of God and serve tables. So they told them to seek out among you seven men. Seven men of an honest report. Seven men full of the Holy Ghost. Seven men full of wisdom and faith. That was the criteria for those who they had chose. And Philip was one of the ones that was chosen. He was one that was chosen. But the apostles made this clear. They said, when they seek out those seven men, they had to continuously be in prayer and the ministry of the word. That's what they were supposed to do. And when they sought those seven men, it pleased the multitude. It had pleased the multitude. So that's when we come to where we're at today, an Ethiopian official baptized. Our lesson scriptures that was read earlier is coming from Acts 8, 26, 40. Focus scripture, Acts 8. 29, 40, and the key verse, he commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuchs, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him, Acts 8 and 38. Starting at verse 29, and I hope you got your Bible, because I'm going to be turning to a few places today. Oh, glory be to God. Then the Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said unto Philip, he said, go near and join thyself to this chair. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide all who desire such a relationship. He'll always lead and guide those who are seeking this kind of relationship with the Lord. And after Philip got his instruction, he knew exactly what it was he was to do. Now, verse 30. And Philip ran. It didn't say he thought about it. It did not say he walked. It said he ran to him. Oh, glory be to God. Now, <clears throat> and heard him read Isaiah the prophet. Now, when I was reading this, the Lord had said this. He said, now, he heard him. He wasn't, he wasn't reading it quietly, but he was reading it out loud. He was reading it out loud because he heard him. He heard him reading that. <clears throat> and said, understandest thou what thou readest? Oh, glory be to God. <clears throat> Philip said, now, Philip said, understand this thou. Do you understand? He said, do you understand what you're reading? Now, see, it was the Holy Spirit that led Philip to ask that question. The Holy Spirit led Philip to ask that question. Now, I want you to see how this man responded. 
A question was asked, and he responded with a question. L look at what it says here in 31. And he said, how can I accept some man should God me? Let's stop right there for a minute. Now, this week the Lord had me back in. I, I, I got to go here for, for a minute. Amen. See if I can. Now, we're we coming back to the second part of verse 31. But I need, I need you to turn to, to Romans for a minute. Romans, glory be to God. Romans, the 10th chapter. I, I spent some time this week in Romans, so it, it's Romans, the 10th chapter. And in Romans, the 10th chapter, I'm going to read three verses. That'll be the 13th, 14th, and 15th. <clears throat> I have pages still turning, so I, I know we're close. Amen. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This man was not saved. Not yet. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Pastor, I was going to have you to read this, but I'm, I'm going to just go ahead on and do it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Amen. Now, Pastor told us the other night. First, he, he told us about Aristotle. He told us which came first, the chicken or the egg. And then he said, which came first, believing or the water, believing or the baptism? Which came first? Now, I want you to see what he's saying now. He said, how shall they call upon him whom they have not believed? So we see here that believing come first. Believing come first. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? Now see, <clears throat> he was handed. He was handed. And how shall they hear without a preacher? So now we can see how important it is for a preacher. We can see how important a preacher is. Because a preacher is one that will help us understand the scriptures. He's one that can lead us in the word of truth in the word of God. He can lead us in that area. That's how important a preacher is to us. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Well, Philip was sent. He was sent by the Holy Spirit. And he was sent. He was sent. And look at this now. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. <clears throat> I want to say something on that, but I got to wait a few minutes before I say something on that. I'm going to be coming right back to the scriptures in a, in a few minutes, but I'm going to go back to this second part of this verse. And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. <clears throat> Glory be to God. Now the reason he wanted Philip to come and sit with him is because he needed Philip to expound, explain the scriptures to him. That's why he wanted him to come up and sit with him. And verse 32 said, the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearers, so opened he not his mouth. Now, I'm going to turn to Isaiah 53 now. 53, 7, and 8. We're going we, we to find out where he was reading from in Isaiah 53, 7, and 8. 7 read. And he was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. I'm going to stop right there for a minute. Now, John said in 1 John, I'm talking about the gospel now, 1 John 1 and 29, John said, 
the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. That's what John said. Now, I want you to remember now who John is talking about, because it's, it's going to come into play in a few minutes. And as, and as a sheep before his shearers is done, so he opened not his mouth. Verse 8, he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Was he stricken. You know what? You know what Philip is, is, is talking to him about and what Isaiah is talking about? He, he's... he's he, he's, he's talking here about the cross and the manner of approach by our Lord to this sacrifice. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Isaiah 53, 7 and 8. When you get a chance, go back and read that. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. That means that all justice was suspended concerning the trial and crucifixion of Christ. And who shall declare his generation? This means that the Jewish Sanhedrin had tried to blot out his memory, but with no success at all. For his life is taken from the earth. Despite, oh glory be to God, despite their evil intention, the plan of God was carried out to total fulfillment. Total fulfillment. They tried it all, but none of it worked for them. Verse 34. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speakest the prophet this? Of himself or of some other man. Oh, glory. Now, now, now you, you, you have to understand this one now. You see, this man, he was hungry and he was thirsting after the Lord, after righteousness. That's what he was seeking after. And, the, and he asked the question, is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? <laughs> oh, glory be to God. You see, that right there, this gave Philip the perfect opportunity to tell him about Jesus. To tell him about the resurrected Christ. To tell him about Jesus Christ and him crucified. This was the perfect opportunity to do this. Now, look at, now, now this is when he starts. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. I know you're getting a little tired, but I wanna, I'm going to have you back, back in the scriptures again just for a minute. Just for a minute. See, I, I can tell it to you, but sometimes you have to show it. I want to turn for a minute to, to Luke's, the 24th chapter. And we could talk about what Philip talked to him about, Luke 24 and 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded. He explained unto them all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. He, now, before I say anything on that, I, wanted to, I want you to go, stay right where you're at, but let's go over to verse 45. Then opened he their understanding, and they might understand the scriptures. You see, when Philip expounded the scriptures to him, for Moses 
through, I don't know if you hear this word, but I want to say this word again. That's why I didn't send it. And he expounded them scripture to them through, from Moses through all the prophets. It said, in all the scriptures. It, it wasn't some, it wasn't a few, it was all the scriptures through Moses and the prophet. He, he explained all of that to him. All of that to him, he, ex, he explained it to him. And then in verse 45, that's when his understanding was open. That's when he understood exactly what Philip was explaining to him. In verse 45, it was open. It was open. I just wanted to share that, that with you. Now, I may have you to look at something else, but, but it, it's going to be a, a, a few minutes later. <clears throat> now, verse 36. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. Holy right there. Glory be to God. Listen at this. And as they journeyed a little ways with Philip, explaining to him all of this time, they came to a place where there was water. Evidently, Philip had explained to him that water baptism was an outward sign that Jesus had been accepted in their heart. It was an outward sign that Jesus was accepted in their heart. Now, the second part of that verse says, and the eunuchs, oh, glory be to God. Look like we're going a little fast today. <laughs> and the eunuchs said, uh, and the eunuchs said, see, here is water. What do hinder me? To be baptized. To be baptized. Like the pastor say, nothing. He, nothing. You see, his heart was ready. He was ready. And he wanted to take the next step. You know what I'm saying? He wanted to take the next step because he, see, he had already believed it in his heart. And, and the next step was water. I'm going to say it that way. It was water. Baptism. <laughs> it, it was water. That, 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 that was the next step. <clears throat> he had accepted Christ and was now eager to follow the Lord wherever the Lord led him. He was ready. He was ready. Verse 37. And Philip said, this is good. If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. Now, like we were saying, believing come first. But there was something that needed to be confessed when they believed. And the second part of that verse tells us what was confessed. He See, it, it tells us what he had believed. And what he had believed was that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, the Apostle Paul says it a little differently, but it means the same thing. He, he's saying the same thing that Philip is talking to this Ethiopian official about. He said, if thou shalt confess, if thou shalt confess, oh, glory be to God, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This man had believed, and he had confessed exactly what it was he had believed. He believed that Jesus is the Son of God. He was saved. He was saved. He was saved. That's what the scripture said. Thou shalt be saved. He had been saved. Oh, glory be to God. Like I said, we're going 
a little fast. We're going to be out the way before they come out there. <laughs> but I want to I say this before. Um, well, let's, let, let's, just, let's just go on a little further here. Um, and he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the son of God. You see, <clears throat> this is the only scripture requirement for salvation. Once you confess what you believe, that's the only scripture requirement for salvation. Now, <clears throat> I want to I want to change a little bit. I want to talk about something here um, about this man. See, you see, until Philip came along and started talking to him about Jesus, he didn't really understand the scriptures. Now, I want you to think about this for a minute. Now, when Jesus walked with his disciples, and they walked with him for three years and six months, they witnessed all the miracles that Jesus had performed. They saw all the signs that was done, but yet they did not understand the scriptures, the teaching that Jesus taught them. In a lot of those things, they didn't understand what Jesus was teaching them. They weren't no different than this Ethiopian official. They had that same problem. But Jesus told them one thing that they needed. He told them to wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. They had to wait on that. And see, when the Holy Spirit came, oh, glory be to God. When he came, then everything that Jesus taught them for that time he was with them for those three years, that's when they start to understand the scriptures. They couldn't, they couldn't do it before then. They couldn't do it before then. No matter how hard they tried, you know what I'm saying, they would resort right back to who they were before Jesus. But when the Holy Spirit came and they was endowed with power, then they remembered all the teaching. Then they remembered all the scriptures. Then they remembered everything that Jesus had taught them, had said to them, and had did before them. That's the reason why Peter could stand up and, and, and confess so boldly what, about Christ on the day of Pentecost. I'm talking about 10 days after Passover. That's why he could stand up. <laughs> And, and Pastor Trump, I'm going to get into your, your, your teaching a little bit. You, you see, <laughs> when, when that day had come, and they thought that, you know, well, these, these men are drunk. But they wasn't drunk. Now, I'd like to refer back to, 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 uh, to the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be full with the Spirit. And see, what was going on that day? Full with the Spirit. They wasn't drunk as a person that's full of alcoholic beverage. You know what I'm saying? They were drunk by the Spirit. And let me tell you something now. I told you this last week. I ain't making this up. You see, you can get drunk in the Spirit. You can praise God so hard, you'll start acting the same way that a man who's full of alcohol acts. You will act the same way. And see, they were acting that way. And then people, the multitude that saw them, you know, all of them was full with the Holy Ghost. But those who had saw them that day, let me, they were amazed because they heard them speaking in their dialect. They heard them speaking in their native language. And they understood everything that they were saying, but all of them were Galileans. But yet they were speaking in their native language. They were speaking their language. And they understood what they were saying. They understood it. They understood it. But see, none of that would have happened if they hadn't first been full with the Holy Ghost. over here because 
um, they're talking about the um, talking about the Holy Spirit. You cannot do anything without the Holy Spirit. And if you read back from um, the from the you know when the last last week, and you you I hope y'all read in between. And the church got radical. The church got radical. Those disciples and apostles, they got radical. When the Holy Spirit, when they was endowed with the Holy Spirit, we cannot do anything without the, we don't have power. We don't have power on our own. I don't, I don't want to take, we do not have power on our own, and we got to know that we got the Holy Spirit. So when God says something, you got to move. You know, what is it, Philip? Philip was out there, you know, ministry, strong ministry in Samaria. He was doing his thing. But the Holy Ghost came and whispered and told him to go this way. He went in the desert to get one lost sheep. My God, this is so, the Holy Spirit. Don't play with the Holy Ghost. You got to be endowed. You got to be equipped to do what God has assigned your hands to. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. I, I just got, for, don't play with God. You got to be able to hear. And when Brother Ross said, hear, he heard. He heard the man. The man was reading out loud, so God gave him that to hear. I don't know how far Philip was from him, but he heard, and he said, okay, I got to go this way. In the desert, dry. He had a good ministry. He was preaching and doing some things over there, Pastor. You know how it is. Y'all, I'm just excited. You got, I'm just excited. The Holy Spirit will take you someplace. Will move you in a direction, hallelujah, that you got to go. Here, take over. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and that is that is absolute confirmation. And many times I tell people, if you want to know how you call, and if you are going into an impossible situation where it doesn't look like this is going to work out, if you're getting sent into a situation where the church, you know the church is going to close, but the Lord said, go there, and the church actually closed, but it worked out for the good of the people that were in that church, if you are being sent to a church, I'm talking to some preacher on this live stream, but if you're being sent to a church and you can't get a salary and you stay and you don't mind staying, my brother, my sister, you call because that is not a good feeling. That's that dry desert that Sister Reverend Sumter is talking about. That's that dry desert where there's no life, there's no water there, but Jesus said, go anyway because I want you to say something to those people who are in that dry situation. And when that person got the message in that dry situation, they received something called what? The Holy Spirit, when they believed on Jesus Christ. So that's how you know if you're called. That's how you know if you're called. If you're going into a situation that don't look good, but, you but you're happy to be there, you don't mind going there, guess what? That's how you know you're truly called by the Lord. Amen. That's, that's what was missing in their lives, and that is what's needed in our lives. It doesn't matter where you start from. The only thing that matters is where you end up. And see, Phillips started out as one of the original seven, but he ended up as an evangelist. He said that the other night. He ended up as an evangelist. Oh, glory be to God. All you have to do is just start. And the Holy Spirit will lead you every step of the way. Every step of the way. You see, that's what he did with them. You see, all those teaching, he brought them all back to their remembrance. Brought them all back. He guided them every step of the way. Just like Philip did for this Ethiopian official. He guided him every step of the way. From Moses through the prophet. Every step of the way. And God, Lord, have mercy. That, and I got to say it again. 
that's the reason why preachers are so important to us. When we don't understand the scriptures, they can guide us and lead us. You understand what I'm saying? I know the Holy Spirit is there too, but the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness to the truth. You know what I'm saying? If he's speaking the truth, the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness to the truth on the inside of you. And, and you will know that it's the truth. But they are very important saints. Men and women. Teachers. All of them. They're important to us. Because we need to understand what God is saying to us through the word of God. We need that. We need that. And they needed it too. Amen. I just will say one last thing, and you brought out the important thing that we all needed to hear. Philip went from Moses all the way up. He went, he went, from, he went through all the scripture. So what I'm saying is the message shouldn't be based on one scripture where it says that you can get something. You know where I'm going with this? Prosperity message? Amen. That is not the gospel. Amen. And so when Philip went, when, when Philip went from, 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 from Moses all the way up, he gave a totality of the whole reading about Jesus. And so if, and if, if we're just preaching about if you give your tithes and offering, God's going to give you a million dollars, that is not the gospel. Amen. Now, don't, don't get me wrong now. When we trust in the Lord, when we believe in the Lord, when we do what thus said the Lord by faith, guess what? The Lord is going to bless us. But that is not what the gospel is all about. Trying to pinpoint certain scriptures so that you might respond to what did that one thing. So, so Jesus is not one-dimensional. He is not one-dimensional. There's so much more. That if, in other words, when you hear a message and that's all you're hearing, you should say to yourself, that's all you got? That's the only thing you have. You don't have anything from Genesis through Revelation. You just got that one verse. And preachers have to do what? Go from beginning. And we got to be one with the word of God. We have to be one with the word of God. Because if you are not, if you're not, if you're in error in any part of the scripture, brother, my brother, my sister, you cannot preach the truth of Jesus Christ. Because you have to be able to go everywhere the Holy Spirit says, go in this word. Amen. Amen. And I know what they taught last week about, uh, about Peter and uh, about Peter and John and how they were you know, went to the gate, the beautiful gate. And and I just thought, and I said, Lord, this is and, and just like Pastor says, it's it's not about prosperity. Because sometimes we're looking for something from God. We're looking for a bunch of cash or some money or something like that. But then God says He's gonna give us what we need. Didn't he do that with the, the man who was sitting there, sitting down looking for arms and looking for money? And he, that, that wasn't what he needed. He needed to be healed. He needed to be set free. So he gave him what he needed. Sometimes we're looking for something else, and we want something else, but God will give us what we need. <laughs> and, and I know that's true. Know that's true. Oh, all you have to do is just think back to what happened. Like she just said, you know, the reason he looked on them because he was expecting, he was expecting something from them. But they let him know this, that silver and gold, they didn't have none. So they know he was expecting money. But you know what they had? And the pastor taught on this before too. They had the name of Jesus. They had that name. Now you see, in that name now, Jesus knew exactly what he needed. He didn't need money. He needed legs. <laughs> Stay with me now. He needed legs. And God gave him what he needed. Not what he, he wanted money, but God gave him legs. That's what, that was his need. That was his need. And see, if he had the legs, then he could go out and make all the money he needed. <laughs> he could go out and make all the money he needed. Yeah, yeah, that's what he needs. The Lord supply all our needs. Like you said, not our wants. El <laughs> El <said. laughs> he supply our needs. God will supply every need. Whatever it is. Yeah, whatever it is, he'll supply. He will supply. 
And God has great blessing, faithful members for each and every one of you. The more you stay on the God word, the more God is going to bless you. The more God is going to help you. The more you learn about him, the more he's going to do in your life. It's closed, so I might as well uh, finish reading the rest of these scriptures because I got carried away there with, you know, listening at the, the, the great things that, that people say about the Holy Spirit because, saints, I'm going to tell you, I trust him with, with, with everything that is in me. I, I truly trust him. And, and I know he's real to me. He, he's real to me. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the waters, both Philip and the youths. And he baptized him. I'm just going to finish reading these because I know they're about to come from out the back. And, and I'm going to say one or two things more and I'm going to be out your way. And when they were come out of the water, after he was baptized. The spirit of the Lord caught Philip away, that the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. See, this man was so grateful for what Philip did and what the Holy Spirit had did. He was so grateful for being saved that, I want you to hear what I say, he went away rejoicing. He went away happy. You know, now, I'm going to refer back to something that some of y'all can know what I'm talking about. Now, I, I think it's in James. James said that when you're married, you start to sing. I believe this man went down the road singing up a storm because he was happy. He was merry. I mean, he was, he was rejoicing. Now, he was the one that I got saved, but he was rejoicing. You know, the Bible tells us that the angels in heaven rejoice over one soul. But this man was rejoicing over his own soul. <laughs> Glory be to God. He, he was happy. He was happy. And see, see, that's the way it should be with us. You understand what I'm saying? And then, Forty said, but Philip was found at Azotus. And passing through, he preached in all. I want to say that again. In all. Not a few, not some. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. Now Caesarea, you see, he got his next assignment. His next assignment was 60 miles north of Azotus. Yeah. 60 miles away. Yeah. Yeah. But glory be to God. And like I told you last week, see, I sweat easy. I, if I stand and move, I'm going to start sweating. But don't worry about that. Everything is good. Because I believe that y'all heard the word of God today. I believe that y'all received the word of God. And I pray that that word that you heard, it will, it will build your faith even to a stronger degree in the things of the Lord. A stronger degree. I pray that God will illuminate you with that word. I pray that that word will be so ingrained into your spirit. That whenever you leave, throughout this week, that word will be with you. Just like that word was with me the other night. I don't normally go home and, and listen at, at something I, I, was, I was sitting in and I had. But I had to listen to it again. And, and, and I'm going to use a little humor here because he said something the other night. He said, when, when, when the man was um, baptized, he, he said that, that the water was a little muddy. The water might have been poison. He said that the water might have had alligator in it. He said that the water might have had some snakes in it. Now, if there were some snakes in there, I wasn't getting any. <laughs> I wasn't getting, there's some snakes in it. I, I ain't getting in it. I'm just, that, I'm just using a little humor. Because of what he had said the other night. But, but it, was, it was a great teaching. I enjoyed it. And just like I say, I listened to it a second time. 
Everything he said, it was, it, it was good. And I know that it was meant for me because I learned some things that I didn't know before. And I thank God for that word. And I thank God for you and your family. I thank God for each and every one of you who heard the word of God today and applied to your heart and your life. Thank each and every one of you for it. Good morning, good morning, everyone. God bless you. <laughs> okay. Our lesson is titled what this morning? Now, come on. Our lesson is titled what this morning? Okay, and it's coming from where? Okay, all right, you close up uh, the, the book of Acts. We were talking this morning about a disciple of Jesus. Remember when Jesus was gone up into glory, and before he went, he told all his disciples to do what? Go where? Go where? Go to all where? Go to the four corners and do what? Go to the four corners and do what mess. And do what? Mm. Teach. Thank you. Go to the four corners and to teach. When we teach God's word, we make what? More what? Say it. Disciples. 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 What is God teaching you guys? God wants to be bold for his word, okay? He don't want you to sit up and be afraid. This unit. This unit wasn't afraid to do what? Ask Pastor Tim to do what? Do what? Do what in their water? Baptize him. He asked to be baptized. Philip, the Holy Spirit led Philip over to this man. All right? This man was sitting in his chariot, minding his business, doing what he was doing. Holy Spirit told him to go over there. When he went over there, what was he doing? Reading what? Reading the scriptures. <clears throat> Reading the scriptures. If I talk low, will y'all talk loud? Maybe. Okay. All right. Landon said maybe and then. Okay. All right. He was sitting there reading his scriptures. And, and, and Philip heard him reading the scriptures. And, and did, what did Philip ask him? No, 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 no. What did Philip ask him when he was reading? Do you understand? Do you understand it? Do you understand what you're reading? And he told Philip, no, how can I understand unless somebody help me? What I always tell you, when you're reading your lesson or even your Bible, if you don't understand what I tell you, ask somebody. And if you can't find nobody in your presence, you pray. And God said, God, help me to understand this. Pray and, and help me to understand this. Okay. So um, all he knew he was reading about, he wanted he to know who was this person or whoever that was led to the slaughter like a, like a, like a, like a lamb. You know, like a, like a sheep. And he said then, did like a lamb just hold him down and shoot? Who was, ain't saying a word? Who would do that? You don't say a mumbling word. Who didn't say anything? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Jesus already said all he had to say. Jesus knew this day was coming because he knew what he came to do, didn't he? And he's been telling them for the longest time, I'm not going to be with you long. Didn't he tell them that? So he was here for this purpose, okay? So the unit, then he, he still was asking questions. They kept riding along. To, and he they thought the water. And he asked Philip, is there any reason why I can't be baptized? And when you ask, God said, and ask it, it shall be given. Knock and the door will be open. Seek and you shall find. Ain't that what he said? Well, well, he did. That's what he said. Trust me. I'll show it to you. That's what he said. That's what he said. So he asked and he was baptized, okay? When, he, when they both went into the water, Philip baptized them. When he came back up, who was gone? Who was, mm, not this time, who was gone? It was Philip and the eunuchs in the water. Then they came back up. Who was gone? Philip was gone. Spirit got to be moving. Then soon he started doing what? What did he do? What was he doing? What was he doing? What was he doing? Rejoicing. He was rejoicing. He was, uh, in my spirit, I believe Philip had got rid of another disciple. So when he goes out, he's going to 
to talk and tell the word, let's get okay. Then you're going to do that. Amen. Then we hear the word. And Reverend, Reverend Glenn says, say it again, Reverend Glenn, words shall what? Always, God is, he wants us to ask, all right? He wants us to come to him and ask. Then you don't understand, you go and ask him to do what? Ask who? Ask God, okay? When, when, when it seems like it's so hard, what do you do? Ask who? God. When it seems like you don't understand what to do. God. Then you just want to say, God, I need help. What to do? Pray. Pray. Great to the forty one dollar. teaching that it will be inspiring to you that when you leave this place it'll be something lingering in your spirit for you to go back to search the scripture to see what God is saying you know um, and that's what happened with the encounter on the road um, with Philip and, in it, and the unit you know for them to go out that's the charge that we have to make disciples Amen. by our word and our true confession. When God has changed you, he has changed you, and it's through the Holy Spirit Amen. that God changes us and his love that lives and abides in us. May we stand for the benediction. Amen. Church school. I believe in my AME church school. Let's grow and grow. And there are conflicting about priorities to be made so. Every member of Christian, every Christian worker, every worker trained, so that the worker need not be ashamed. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We have come, we have studied, and we have learned. So until our next coming together, to study God's words. May his rich blessing resides with you and may Christ be eternally yours. Amen. You are dismissed. Amen.
Let us now stand for the processioning of this wonderful choir. Amen.
Come on and give the Lord some praise. Come on and help me lift Jesus. Come on and help me lift the Lord. Who will help me lift Jesus? Come on and help me lift the Lord. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. We give honor to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For he is indeed the head of all of our lives. To the Reverend Linda Sumter. Let's give the Lord some praise for our wonderful preacher. Amen. To Reverend Aloise Gladden. Let's give the Lord some praise for this wonderful preacher. Amen. To Reverend Manuel Fogel. Let's give the Lord some praise for Reverend Manuel Fogel and his queenly wife. Amen. Lady Elder Ella Fogel, amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Praise the Lord. And last but not least, to the prettiest first lady in all African Methodism, Sister Lachelle Yvette Simpson, the first lady of Mount Olive Amy Church, amen. So did you come to worship Mount Olive Amy Church? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Amen. Our call to divine worship, and it reads thusly, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in the holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thine sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us give the Lord some praise. Amen. As this wonderful new generation's mass choir, amen, leads us in another fiery selection. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, give the Lord some praise, church. Amen. Amen. Somebody, amen. Did you come to have church, my Olive Amy Church? Amen. All right. Whoa, trouble in my way. I had to cry sometime. 
so much trouble. I had to cry sometime. I said a little wink at night. I'm but that's all right. I know that Jesus at the while talking about the trouble in my way. I had to cry sometime. So much trouble. I had to cry sometime. Said a little wink at night. But that's all right. I know that Jesus. Oh, at the while. Talking about the trouble in my way. I had to cry sometime. So much trouble. I had to cry sometime. A little wink at night. 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 Talking with the man above. A little wink at night. But that's all right. I know that Jesus. I know that Jesus. 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 Talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. Mary's baby talking about Jesus I know we will when I get sick he will fix it when I get burdened Jesus will fix it Jesus will fix it Jesus will fix it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus will fix it. Yes, he will fix it. Jesus will fix it. At the while, talking about the trouble in my way, I had to cry sometime. Oh, so much trouble. I had to cry sometime. I said a little wink at night. A little wink at night. A little wink at night. Weeping and crying all night long. A little wink at night. Talking with the man above. Talking with the man above. Talking with the man above, telling him all my troubles, telling him all my troubles, but that's all right. I know that Jesus said, I know that Jesus said, I know that Jesus said, I know he will. I know we will. Won't he do it, church? Won't he do it, church? Won't he fix your problems? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he work it out? Won't he make a way? I said, won't he make a way? I said, won't he make a way out of no way? I know he will. I know he will. I know he will. Won't he, won't he make a way out? Won't he, won't he make a way out? Want it, want it, make go away. Want it, want it, want it, want it, want it. Want it, want it, want it, want it, want it. Want it, want it, want it, want it, want it, want it. Jesus will, 
Jesus will. Oh, at the world. Amen. I want to give the Lord some praise. Somebody call Jesus. 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 The more I call him, the better I feel. I call him early in the morning. I call him in the afternoon. I call him. Jesus, 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 at the wild. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just got to learn to praise the Lord. Until you just start feeling better. Amen. Amen. Somebody needed to get that out your sister this morning. Amen. Just so that you can get your best shot on later on in the worship. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, I'm going to call upon our good friend, amen, Reverend Manuel Fogel, to come. And give us the morning's invocation following a wonderful choral response by this wonderful choir. Amen. Amen. And then we'll have the ministry of song again by the New Generation's Mass Choir. And then we'll have the liturgical readings, the Old Testament by Reverend Eloise Gladden, Old Testament, Psalm 68, verses 1 through 10. The New Testament reading by Reverend Linda Sumter, praise be the Lord, Acts chapter 1. Verses 9 through 11 in that order. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Jesus, he will fix it. Yes. He's going to fix it after a while. Yes. May not come when you want him to come. But he's a God that will be on time. Yes. Eternal God, our Father, our Maker and our Creator. Yes, Lord. God, is it again that you afforded us another chance. Yes, Lord. After you kept us through all this week, yes, yes. even when you lie us down on last evening, yes. and early this morning you touched us with the finger of love, we begin on a new day. Not that we deserve to wake up this morning, but it was by the grace and your mercy. And God, you look beyond our shortcomings and cause our time to go on a little while longer. And God, as we come this hour in the morning, oh God, we, we know, God, that we have come short of what you told us to do. But God, you, you look beyond all of that. And you caused us to move on just a little while longer. And God, we are grateful this morning that you allow us to be able to come back into your house of worship oh, just one more time. And God, as we come this hour, this hour in the morning, Lord, we cannot boast or brag about how good we live, Lord. But God, we all have sinned and come short of your glory. But God, as we come this hour in the morning, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, Lord. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, that you forgive us, Lord, of the thing that we done was not like you, Lord. Oh God, as we come this hour in the morning, Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will stop by Mount Olive. Just one more time, Lord. And God, we know you know what all we stand in the need of. And God, I believe, God, you got blessings that we don't even know anything about. 
And oh God, this hour in the morning, oh God, come right down, Lord. Bless like only you can bless, Lord. And God, we have heard the songs that were sang. And oh God, now we are down praying that you will have mercy upon us, Lord. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, have your way in this house today, Lord. God, somebody needs you, Lord. God, I need you, Lord. And oh God, I'm just waiting on a blessing, Lord. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, have your way, Lord. Bless like only you can bless, Lord. And God, we'll take no credit for ourselves. God, look on this preacher. This preacher, Lord. Who will come, Lord, this day, Lord. To stand between the living and the dead, Lord. Oh God, I believe he got a word, Lord. Oh God, I believe he got a word, Lord. Oh God, I believe he got a word, Lord. I said he got a word today, Lord. That would help us along the way. And oh God, in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. And God, if anybody under the sound of my voice this day, Lord, that does not know you, Lord, oh, God, I pray right now, when the songs that are being sang, and when the word that is going to go forth, I pray, oh, God, that they will cry out, what must I do to be seen? What must I do to be saved? Oh, God, I believe it today. And I count it done today, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And then my Father, then my father, if there's anything that we fail to ask you for, Lord, and God, you see that we need it, Lord. God, if you bless us today, Lord, we are shouted on top of the mountain. We are shouted down in the valley. We will tell somebody about a God who can save anybody and everybody. Oh, in the name of Jesus. God bless these service today, Lord. And if you bless us, Lord, God, we will still praise you. God, we'll still lift you up. God, we'll still give you glory. God, we'll still tell the story of how we made it over, Lord. It was by your grace. And then, Father God, in the name of Jesus, the day will come, Lord. But we won't be able to come to this place, Lord. But God, let us live a life that when we come to the end of your, this journey, Lord, we will hear your voice say, well done. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. For you have been faithful over a few things. And God, in the name of Jesus, if any mama sick, Lord, oh God, I pray for healing, Lord. I say I pray for healing, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And when it's all must come to a lane, God, don't forget about us. But let us rest, and we shall praise you in a world that would never end. Just we ask this morning and be claiming in the name of Jesus. And your people of God will say amen. 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 And amen again.
Everything I need, everything I need, everything you need, God's got it. I greet you in the mighty master's name of Jesus Christ. I'll be reading for your hearing today from Psalm 68, beginning at the first verse. And it reads as thus. Mm. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea. Let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens by the name, by his name, Jay, and rejoice before him. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widow is God in his holy habitation. God setteth the solitary in families. He bringeth out those which are bound with chain. Yes. But the rebellious dwelleth, dwell in a dry land. Yes. O God, when thou winneth 
forth before thy people. When thou didst march through the wilderness, the earth shook. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation has dwelled therein. Thou, O God, has prepared of thy goodness for the poor. I'll read that again. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. Thou, O God, has prepared of thy goodness for the poor. I thank God for Psalm 68, first through the 10th verses, the word of God for God's people. I will be reading this morning for your hearing, the Acts of the Apostles, King James Virgin, chapter 1, 9, 10, and 11 verses. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, yes. which also said, Ye men of Galilee, uh -huh. why stand you gazing up into heaven? Uh -huh. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, yes. shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The word of God for his people. From all that dwells below the skies, let the Creator's praise arise. The summary of the Decalogue. Yes. Hear what Christ our Savior saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Right. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. in the presence of our awesome God. Amen. If you would this morning, look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, I love you. Anything you can do about it. Turn around and look at another neighbor and look them square in the black of the eye and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, you look good this morning. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. At this time, we're going to have the welcoming of our most prestigious guest. Amen. We never refer to our guests as visitors. You are our prestigious guest. Amen. And so we're going to have the welcoming of our guests and announcement by Sister Joanne Brown. And I shall return with further pastor's observations in that order. Amen. Good morning. At this time, I would like to recognize all our guests. If we have anyone that is worshiping with us this morning, will you please stand and let us know where you're visiting from at this time?
Amen. 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 Well, I'm not in there. <laughs> I'm not in there. 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 Let us please continue to pray for um, our sick and shut in and also our bereaved um, family. We, I was informed this morning that Sister Maddie Williams passed on yesterday, and we're asking prayers for her family, the Fogel family, and the Williams family. And also um, keep Reverend Jones, Albert Jones, in your prayers. Um, he funeralized his mother and his brother on yesterday, and the church just continue to pray for them. All ladies... A quick meeting, planning after right after service, planning for Father's Day. First lady, all ladies. If you're a lady, don't sneak out that door. <laughs> and um, our calendar of events um, on May the 27th, um, the Sunday School Convention at 9:30 a.m. at Greater St. John's Amy Church on Roseville Road. And on the May 27th, Pentecost worship service. That's the date and time will be determined. And on June the 13th, our third quarterly conference via Zoom at 7 p.m. And moving towards July 5th through the 8th, and our Aspire 2023 Christian Education Leadership Congress and Theological Institute in Greenville, South Carolina. At this time, this concludes our announcements, and we'll turn it back over to the pastor for his observation. Amen. Let us give the Lord some praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I get into my pastor's observations, amen, we do have wonderful guests, amen, who are doing great things, amen, by way of going into business, amen, and doing great things for themselves. We're going to give them a few brief moments to share that, amen, uh, during this session. Um, but I want to share with you um, that I received a fly, amen, from uh, Pastor Shawanda Green. Praise the Lord. God bless you so much for joining us this morning for worship. Amen. Uh, there was a grand opening for the Hudson Law Firm that took place on yesterday. Amen. And so we want to patronize uh, the services, particularly for black-owned businesses. Praise the Lord. Amen. And I believe that we do, If I believe, I, I hope that I'm, I'm calling your name right. Is it Mr. Hudson? Amen. So before I get any further into my observations, I'm just going to give him a brief few minutes uh, to come and just tell us a little bit about your business venture and what I would do at a later date, perhaps schedule a time where you could come, where I invite the congregation to come out and you can talk about the services uh, that you can offer to our congregation at a later date. Praise the Lord. Amen. Brother Hudson, let us make sure that he gets the mic because we want everyone on the live stream, praise the Lord, uh, to hear about Hudson's law, for, law Firm. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you. I want to say thank you to uh, the pastor for allowing me to come and speak briefly um, for this moment. I am uh, Mr. Hudson. I am I'm from Timminsville, South Carolina. And Miss Green, that's my aunt. And so I'm no stranger to my olive. I've been here before with her. And um, I just want to say thank you all for allowing me to come. And as what pastor was saying, I just opened up a new law firm in um, Orangeburg, South Carolina. It's um, off of Pelham Court, and I'm sure if you guys know where Huddo Seafood is, we're in that same little, that plaza, right across from the OBGYN office. And um, we just opened uh, yesterday. That was our grand opening, um, and the Lord has allowed us to open up. This is our second location, and, um, and my first location is in Timminsville. Um, South Carolina. This is our second location in Orangeburg, and I'm only 28 years old, so Praise God has really been good to me. Praise He's been really good to me. Um, I'm, I'm also the judge of Timminsville, South Carolina. And so God is really... Amen. Really Let good. us all stand all over the house of God and applaud that. 28 years old. Amen. What an amazing feat. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. So the Lord, the Lord has really been good to me. He's really been good to me. And it's only, it's only by his grace and his mercy that I am here today. Um, briefly, I just want to share with you, and I'm going to leave some with Pastor 
um, to have my number and contact information. I specialize, my law firm specializes in criminal defense. I hope none of y'all need me in that area. Hope nobody needs me. But we also specialize in um, family law as child custody battles, divorces, anything of that nature, um, DSS cases. We also specialize in real estate, so we can do closings, land transfers, and different things, slip and fall cases, car accidents, medical malpractice, you name it, I can do it. And so uh, I can do it. And um, we're open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. in, again, at um, 2851 Pelham Court. I'm going to leave some of these cards as well. And the last thing that I want to say is um, because Pastor has allowed me to come and speak to Mount Olive today, all of those who are part of Mount Olive Church, you can come to my office um, anytime or call the number and make an appointment because we will be doing free wills for everybody that's a member of Amen. Mount Olive. All right? Thank Amen. You. Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise. Amen. Amen. Brother Hudson, what I will do. Amen. I'm going to, what I'm going to do, I'm going to schedule a day where you will come. And I'm going to have my honor to come back. And those who need wills or need wills updated, we will come on that day. Praise the Lord. And, and we will allow you to take us through the steps that's needed uh, so that we make sure that we have our paperwork in, in, in place. So when the Lord calls us from labor to reward, amen, we don't leave the family in chaos, amen, because everything has already been laid out in advance. So I will get with you and schedule a day and time that works with you so that you can come right back here at Mount Olive Amy Church and we'll come and have everyone to come and invite the public to come, amen, so that we can really help kick off your second location, amen. Give the Lord praise, amen. And thank you so much, Pastor Green, amen, for bringing this young brother my way, amen. And, and, and you must have really been looking at the fact that I work at DJJ and work with those kids who get in trouble with the law, amen. And so we need to make sure that we have resources in place to take care of our children, yes. amen, to help our children uh, get the best possible uh, to get the best possible situation that they're in to be able to get through it and get out of it and move on with their lives, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just want to say congratulations to all graduates who are graduating from high school and from college. I know that the month of May is extremely busy with graduations. Amen. I have not heard of any graduations from Mount Olive Amy Church. Amen. But those of you that have nieces, nephews, grandchildren, family members who are graduating from high school and from college. Amen. Congratulations to them. So we want to congratulate them on their monumental achievement, amen. I do believe that Children's Day is on the second Sunday of next month, and when our youth, when our youth, when our children, amen, uh, finish the school season, amen, we're gonna put something in place where we will recognize them for their accomplishments for being promoted to the next grade, as well as all the other accomplishments that they've made throughout the school year, amen. Um, as mentioned, our quality conference, our third quality conference is January, I mean, I'm sorry, June, I'm going back in time, June the 13th, amen, June the 13th is going to be virtual at 7 p.m., and that link will be given to you at a later date, but I wanted to get that word out there earlier for our, all of our auxiliaries. You have been doing a phenomenal job this quarter with all the work that you've been doing for the community, so I want you right now to begin preparing your reports. I want you to put it all in writing and I want you to get it to me so when it's time for me to start putting the quality, re quality counts reports together that our presiding elder can see everything that the Sons of Allen had just done, everything that the Women's Missionary Society has done and YPD and lay organization and so on and so on. But those reporting months for this quarter is March, April, and May. So everything that you've done in March, April, and May, as well as our Christian Ed Director, hardworking Christian Ed Director, Sister Lily Green, in those months, I want to make sure that you, ca you capture everything that you have done so that when we put the report together, we have it recorded. Amen. And I want the secretaries and the financial secretaries for those auxiliaries to please begin to start forwarding me your reports financially so that I don't have to go back and try to separate all those numbers out of the overall financial report. Just give that to me so I can place it on your report, amen, so that we could be as expeditious as possible. Uh, with that quality conference preparation, amen? 
immediately after church, and I know our wonderful First Lady is looking forward to meeting with our delightful flowers in our garden, amen, so that you can plan for Father's Day, amen, because we've set the bar so high, praise the Lord, amen, somebody. But I do need to meet with, and she's like, yeah, right, mm -hmm. I heard that. All right, praise the Lord. My ears ain't big for nothing. Praise the Lord, I hear it all. But, but, but immediately after church, and it's going to be very brief, I want to meet with the steward board because we do have a, a board meeting on this coming Tuesday at 630, and there's some matters that is going to be brought up in, the, uh, in that particular board meeting that I want to prepare you for so that we can briefly discuss it today so that way when we go into the official board meeting, uh, everyone is on the same sheet of music. Amen? So it's going to be very brief, and I want you to meet me in class number one. Praise the Lord. That is the first room. Doesn't that sound good, classroom number one? Amen? Praise the Lord. This very first room right here, well, from the, right off from this exit door, I want to meet with all the stewards in classroom one, and I promise you, it will not be very long. Amen. So I just want to just talk about one thing in particular, and that's it. One thing, and then I'm going to just turn the ladies loose over to the first ladies meeting, and then we'll prepare ourselves to uh, go home. We want to pray. We really want to pray for the Williams family. Amen. The family of Sister Maddie Williams, who had just passed away on yesterday. I got the phone call that she has passed away. Praise the Lord. And so we know that she had been diagnosed with an illness with a limited amount of time uh, to, to remain with us. But the Lord saw fit. It was the Lord's will that he saw fit that Sister Maddie come home to live with him. I believe that she was 96 years old, praise the Lord. And so she has lived well beyond the promise of God of three score and 10 years, which is 70. So the Lord has blessed you to live longer than that. God has blessed you to live beyond the promise, to live a fruitful life and a blessed life. And so she's home with the Lord. Amen. So we want to pray for the family. We want to cheer, uh, cheer the family on and make them feel, 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 feel loved, that we're here for them, that we want to, we want to be, there, be there for them to encourage them during their difficult moment. It is their time right now. But guess what? Our time will come. And all we have to do is live, and it will be our time. Amen. But let us continue to pray for every single sick, sick and shut-in member all over the church and all the sick people all over the world. Praise the Lord that the Lord will begin to continue to make a miracle happen. I still believe in signs and wonders. I still believe in miracles. I still believe that with my faith I can lay hands on the sick because the Bible says so, and they shall what? recover. I believe, but we have to pray that the power of God will flow in us to make these things happen. Amen. One last thing, amen, and we'll get back to the worship experience, praise the Lord. Our bishop will be on the district today, amen, at 3 p.m. at Rock Hill AME Church, amen. I believe that they're having a gospel explosion over there. I think they may have asked the mail course to come to rent a selection. Is that right, Brother Clyde, um, Clyde Bull? Is that right? I think they asked for the mail course to come. Praise the Lord. Well, either way, we're going to come as many as we possibly can, and we're going to help them put a brick on the Lord as we listen to some ex excellent, exegetical, theologically sound preaching from our bishop. Amen. That concludes all the announcement that the pastor has. Amen. I want to say this again. Have I told you that I love you lately, Mount Olive Amy Church? Amen. I love you so much. I can't wait till Sunday comes so I can see you. Amen. You make this pastor smile. And I pray that I stay your pastor till the day that the Lord either turns my hair loose or turn gray. Prayerfully turn gray because I ain't trying to turn none loose. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let us get back into this wonderful worship experience where we worship the Lord through what? Giving. As we always say, the Lord, he loves a cheerful giver. Are you happy about giving back unto the Lord? And in your great happiness. Now, this is not prosperity ministry, but we do know that the Lord, he responds to his word, right? He says that if you give, it shall be given unto you. Amen. So as you use the word, as you exercise the word, God will do what? Make a miracle happen in your way of worship by giving. 
The barcode right there is on the screen for those who are given by way of Giblify, amen. And to our wonderful guests who are joining us, if you're given by way of envelope at the very end of worship service, we receive the tithes and offerings through this door right here where Brother Al, where, where Brother, uh, brother, where brother Al uh, uh, Kid, praise about Clark, amen, praise the Lord. Those names get tangled up every once in a while. I know you, Brother Clark, praise the Lord, amen. But our wonderful usher who's standing at this door with the tie in the boxes on the other side, praise the Lord. You will drop your offering out on the other side of this door and you will continue the fellowship as you exit the sanctuary. So let us look to the Lord as we bless this offering. God, thank you so much. Oh, you've been so good to us. Lord, we look at everything we have. Everything we have, God, we look at it, we see that it was you that made it possible. And without you making it possible, Lord, we wouldn't have it. But God, we thank you for everything we have, from the least to the great. And God, we give back as an act of worship, oh God, because you've been just that good. So as we give you away praise with our tithes and our offerings, we just pray, God, that we make you smile because we joyfully give back to you. And as we joyfully give back unto you, we pray, God, that you will bless this offering, that it might be used for the upkeep and the building of your kingdom. For it's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray, and the saints of God all said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. <laughs> at this time, we're going to hear another wonderful selection. Amen. By this dynamic choir. Amen. Amen. Who all came to practice yesterday. Can I say that again? Can the practice? Can I say that one more time? They came to practice yesterday. Y'all, they they came to practice, and guess what? As my mom would say, they practice. They practice. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they honor the rules of this choir. If you don't practice, what? You sit in the congregation and don't sing. You sing next month. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because we want to give the Lord our very best. Amen. So at this time, we'll hear a selection from this wonderful choir, and we'll hear a word from the Lord. Amen.
Give the Lord some more praise. Jesus said he will. He said if you ask anything in my name, are you crazy enough to believe the word of God? That if you ask anything, anything, Jesus, Jesus says I'll do it that the Father might be glorified in the Son. And all you got to do is what? Just ask. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. Before we get into the Word of God, I just want to make you mindful that we've been announcing Pentecost is next Sunday. And we're just going to just recognize Pentecost during the worship service on Sunday morning. Amen. That is a major liturgical holiday. We are a liturgical church, are we not, Mount Olive Amy Church? We recognize everything from the birth of Jesus Christ all the way up to the ascension and the falling of the Holy Spirit. And so there are certain times of the season that we ought to be recognizing certain things. 
And yeah. so we want to be intentional in recognizing that the church was born on the day of Pentecost. And we want to aim specifically at the birth of the church next Sunday. But there is a word from the Lord as it is found again in the book of Acts chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I want to thank these fine preachers for reading the liturgical reading, which ends the last Sunday of Easter. I know we show up on Easter Sunday with the nice dresses and things of that nature, and that's just the end for most of us. But that is just the beginning of a celebration that lasts seven Sundays until the falling of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. So this Sunday is the last Sunday of Easter liturgically. And we will be in the birth of the church in just a few days. But we are in the book of Acts chapter 1. And we will read verses 9 through 11. I'm going to be using the Homeless Christian Standard Bible, and it shall read this way. After he had said this, he was taken up as they were watching. The disciples were watching him being taken up. And the cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, they were gazing into heaven. And suddenly two men in white clothes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up into heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way that you have seen him going into heaven. This same Jesus, this same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way, will come in the same way. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. I need you to pray with me for me, my all of me, church, as I use for thought. He will come again. He will come again. And I'm going to use as a sub-thought this question. Why is your head in the clouds? Why is your head in the clouds? He will come again. Why is your head in the clouds? Shall we pray? Lord, we thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, you didn't, you didn't do it just for you. You did it for us that we might believe in you and have eternal life. You came that you might show what the Father looks like in the Son. You came that you might hung, hang, bleed, and die on the cross. And then you went back to sit on the right hand of God the Father. Until an expected time that only God the Father knows. That we might wait for you to come again to receive your church without spot or wrinkle. So we dare not have our heads in the clouds, but be busy, O oh God, because Jesus, we know that you will come back again. For it's in the name of Jesus, the Christ, we pray. Amen. He will come again. You need to talk to your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor, neighbor. he will come again. Amen. Turn around and look at another neighbor and say, neighbor. Why is your head in the clouds? Why is your head in the clouds? And respond back and say, what you talking about? What you talking about? You're going to find out in a minute. Why is your head in the clouds? Why is your head in the clouds? The disciples have just witnessed the ascension of Jesus Christ. As I stated, we are a liturgical church, and we have a liturgical calendar that we follow what is going on in the life of Jesus? Right. Do you not know on Thursday, Thursday was Ascension Day. That was the day that we paused to remember that Jesus went back to sit on the right hand of God the Father. After he showed himself alive to them, 
and to several others for 40 days. Jesus, he went around for 40 days showing that death could not keep him in the ground. Who would not want to serve a God like that, that even death couldn't keep him down? But for 40 days, he went around showing that he was alive, and he tells them to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. We love to say Holy Spirit, but you know, in that old wooden board church that we all grew up in, we didn't mind saying Holy Ghost, amen? Amen. When we hear Holy Ghost, we know what that means. And when we say Holy Ghost, we know what it looks like. Amen. But Jesus, he tells them at the end of his 40 days that you need to wait in Jerusalem. Don't leave. Don't go anywhere. Stay right there in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. And when Jesus, he ascended back up, they stood there watching their Jesus being taken up from them in a cloud in heaven. They stood there and they watched Jesus going up into the clouds and disappearing. You know, I can be a little bit animated, but I can imagine them saying in their minds, I can't believe what I just saw. This man, he just went up and he just went up into the clouds and where is Jesus? I'm pretty sure that they were awestruck and they were shaken by the fact that they saw a man just started going up into the sky and going up into the clouds. There is no science that can explain that phenomenon. It only takes faith to believe that Jesus was able to be taken up into a cloud and we must have faith to believe that if we are the Lord's children. Do I have any children of God in the house this morning? When the rapture comes, we're going to be going in the same way. But we're not going to go until we see Jesus what? Comes back. And while they were looking up towards heaven at their Jesus, uh, disappearing from their sight, they heard a voice of two men in white clothes questioning them. I'm pretty sure that they were standing there trying to make sense out of what they saw, that Jesus went up and he's in the clouds and they don't see him anymore and they're still probably just standing there looking up at this amazing event. Can I get a witness, church? Has Jesus ever done something so amazing in your life that all you could do is just stand there and just stare and not say a word. All right now. But they were standing there and they saw Jesus yes. go up into the clouds. Yes. And they were amazed and shocked. I believe that they probably were perplexly paralyzed uh, because they saw something that didn't make sense. Uh, but then all of a sudden that you know God will send uh, his messenger to get your attention to make you snap out of it. Yes. Look at your neighbor this morning and say, neighbor you need to snap out of that. Hallelujah, church. And look at your neighbor and say, what you talking about? You're going to find out in a minute. Praise the Lord. But snap out of it. Yes, but, but, but these men in white clothes, two men began to question them. And, and, and they said, why are you spending your time uh, looking up into heaven? You know, I want to get to heaven. I have this little joke with people. Uh, sometimes when I get into the car with people that can't drive too well, uh, you know, I tell them, you know, I want to see the Lord. Uh, and I know the Lord, he wants to see me too. Uh, but I don't think he want to see me right now. Uh, slow down a little bit. Uh, that's just some Holy Ghost human our church. Work with you now. Uh, uh, but, but they said, why are you spending your time uh, Look it up into heaven. Uh, yeah. Yes, this was an amazing sight. Uh, yeah. But why are you spending your time standing there? Uh, Jesus, he did something amazing. Uh, but don't you know there's work still left to do? Uh, yeah. Why is your head in the clouds? Uh, this is where the rubber begins to meet the road. Uh, a head in the cloud uh, is a saying, it is an English idiom uh, that refers to someone being absent-minded uh, or 
distracted, uh, are always daydreaming. Uh, you ever been around that person? Uh, when you're trying to talk with them, uh, at first you had the communication going both ways, uh, and then all of a sudden the room gets quiet, uh, and you, it seems like you're talking to yourself. Uh, and then you look over at the person and say, wait a minute now, uh, I'm talking to you, uh, but you are not listening. Uh, you're not responding. Uh, your, 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 your thought, your, your attention just left the room. Uh, that's what's going on here. Uh, but an idiom uh, referring to uh, a, a, a head in the clouds, it refers to someone uh, being distracted. I want to use that word, uh, being distracted. Uh, this idiom is used when someone wants to describe another person uh, not paying attention, like I just said, uh, or being unable to retain information. Uh, that's what's wrong with the world right now. Uh, the reason that we can't retain the word of God. Uh, Y'all ain't going to pray with me, church, but I'm going to bring out the truth. Uh, the reason that our lives are not the way that they should be to us uh, is because sometimes we don't pay attention to the word. Uh, it's sometimes because we let the word distract us. The world distract us uh, from what thus saith the Lord. Uh, the word says that I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Uh, but you've heard somebody always saying that you can't do this uh, and you can't do that. Uh, you're not qualified for this uh, and you're not qualified for that. Uh, but don't you know that's just distractions uh, that's causing you to have your head in the cloud uh, that's causing you not to be able to focus on the word uh, that says that I can do all things through somebody uh, who is that somebody uh, his name is Jesus uh, and if Jesus said that you could do it in my name uh, it doesn't matter what the world says uh, but don't let the world cause you uh, to have your heads caught up in the cloud uh, but here it is, we're getting ready to get to what's going on here. Uh, so what the two men in white clothing was really saying, uh, they were trying to tell them, don't let the visual uh, of what you just saw uh, distract you and cause to lose focus uh, on what is yet to come. Uh, can I break it down a little bit simpler, church? Uh, don't you allow the big blessings uh, that you got right now uh, to miss the fact that the Lord ain't through with you yet. Uh, he's got another blessing with your name on it. Uh, he blessed you with a brand new car. Uh, and I know you're glad about it, uh, but the Lord has more for you. Uh, the Lord, he healed your body. Uh, but guess what? The Lord ain't through yet. Uh, don't get caught up uh, in the moment. Uh, enjoy the moment while it's fresh. Uh, but don't you know keeping your head out the clouds uh, requires you to look at all of Jesus. Uh, see, some of us, we just look at some of Jesus. Uh, can I say that, church? Uh, some of us, we just look at some of Jesus. Uh, and not all of Jesus. Uh, yes, we're happy uh, when we got money in our pocket. Uh, yes, we're happy uh, when we have the tangibles. Uh, but I don't know about you. Uh, but the thing that I like most about Jesus, uh, he shed his blood uh, for you and me. Uh, that's the thing that makes life worth living. Uh, he took nails for you and me. Uh, and I dare not allow uh, the tangibles of life uh, to make me miss the fact uh, because of what Jesus did, uh, I'm able to do more. Uh, look at your neighbor this morning uh, and say, God said that you can do more uh, than what you're doing right now. Uh, get your head out the clouds. Uh, God has more work for you. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, well, 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 uh, yes, it's good uh, that Jesus died on the cross uh, and he rose from the dead. Uh, but get your head out the clouds. Uh, yes, it's good uh, that Jesus got up uh, on the first day of the week uh, with all power in his hands. Uh, but get your head out the clouds. Uh, 
He showed himself uh, with many infallible proofs. Uh, he showed himself uh, cooking fish for his disciples. Uh, he showed himself uh, walking around. Uh, he showed himself alive. Uh, he did all of that. Uh, yes, all that's good. Uh, but get your head out the clouds. Uh, you saw him go up uh, back into heaven. Uh, but get your head out the clouds. Uh, that's not all uh, that Jesus has left uh, to do for you. Uh, he's got more to do. Uh, he's got more to do. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, do you know the Lord uh, has got more work to do? Uh, aren't you glad uh, that he's not done? Uh, aren't you glad uh, that he's just getting started? Uh, look at your neighbor this morning uh, and say, neighbor, uh, he's just getting started. Uh, you thought you saw something. Uh, but he's just getting started. Uh, he's just getting warmed up. Uh, he's getting ready to do more. My Bible tells me uh, that Jesus, uh, yes, he went up. Uh, yes, he went away. Uh, but he's not done. Uh, don't you know? Uh, the Bible says, uh, Jesus, uh, he's coming back. Uh, he will uh, not maybe uh, not might uh, but he will uh, come back uh, so in order for you uh, to see Jesus coming back uh, get your head uh, out the cloud uh, get focus uh, on his word uh, get focus uh, on what he called you uh, to do for him uh, if he called you to teach, uh, get your head out the clouds. Uh, if he called you to sing, uh, get your head out the clouds. Uh, if he called you to preach, uh, get your head out the clouds. Uh, if he called you, uh, did God call you? Uh, well, get your head out the clouds. Uh, because Jesus, uh, he's coming back. Uh, he's coming back. Uh, and don't let him catch you. Uh, with your head in the clouds, uh, don't let him catch you. Uh, not focus, uh, don't let God catch you. Uh, be that uh, don't let him catch you. Uh, not doing his work, uh, don't let him catch you. Uh, daydreaming, uh, don't let him catch you. Uh, standing around, uh, but when he comes back, uh, let the Lord catch you. Uh, being busy. About his work uh, because he's coming back uh, for something. Uh, what is he coming back for, church? Uh, he's coming back uh, for a church uh, without spot. Uh, he's coming back for a church uh, without wrinkles. Uh, he's coming back for a church uh, on fire for him. Uh, he's coming back. 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 Uh, tell the world uh, that Jesus lives. Uh, tell the world uh, that he's alive. Uh, and this man uh, that defeated death, uh, he's coming back. Uh, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. He is coming back. He is coming back. My brother, my sisters, don't let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be dismayed. Jesus is coming back. And he will separate the right for the wrong. Let us stand all over the church. Do you believe that Jesus is coming back, Mount Olive Amy Church. Are you ready for the Lord to come back for you? Hallelujah. Are you ready to go back with Jesus when it comes for you? But just in case, just in case somebody's not ready, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope you're ready. 
But just in case somebody is not ready, let me tell you something, church. People are dying every single day. Hallelujah. Dying in Jesus and dying outside of Jesus. So if you die outside of Jesus, can you say that heaven's going to be your home? But we know that those of us who die in the Lord, we know heaven will be ours. Hallelujah. So just in case we have someone under the sound of my voice, hallelujah, that does not know Jesus, hallelujah, what are you waiting for to get to know this man? I guarantee you, and I have a cloud of witnesses in this church who don't have their heads in the clouds that can testify to what I'm getting ready to say. The minute you accept Christ, your life will never be the same. Your life will be forever changed. So the doors of the church are open this morning. If you don't know this man named Jesus, if you have not given your life to Christ, we want you to come before Pentecost Sunday comes that you might give your life to Christ. Hallelujah. There's a, the doors of the church are open. Will there be one? Will there be one? Will there be one? To come. Will you be saved today? Will you be... Will you give your life to the Lord today? What's stopping you? Hallelujah. Amen. We leave the first petition upon the floor. The Bible says that Jesus is coming back for a church. He is coming back for a church. If you're not a member of any church where you can come together and practice the means of grace and come to the house of prayer and fellowship with your brothers and sisters, hallelujah. We invite you to come and join Mount Olive Amy Church. If you're not a member of any church, we invite you to come. Will you come? Amen. Will you come? Because time is winding up. Will you come? Hallelujah. Amen. Leaving the first two petitions on the floor. Keep on singing choir. Keep singing. The altar is open right now for prayer. And we all have those head clouded moments. The world is out there to distract us so that we can't focus and concentrate on Jesus. And we need to pray to keep our heads what out the clouds. So the altar right now is open that you may come for prayer. Whatever you stand in need of. Jesus said, if you ask, he says, I will do it. Come asking and believing. Come asking and believe. Come asking and believe and he'll give it to you. Come asking and believing that the Lord will make a way out of no way. And when you walk away from this altar, walk away believing that the Lord has already answered your prayers. The altar is open right now. Whatever you stand in need of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on to Jesus. He said, ask anything. He said, ask anything. He said, ask anything. He said, ask. He said, ask. He said, ask it. He said, ask anything. Ask anything. And he said that he will do it. He's doing it for you right now. He's turning your circumstances around. He's healing your body right now. He's making a way out of no way. He's blessed you with that job that you've been trying to get for a long time. He's blessed you with that promotion that you've been working for for so many years. You've had doors closed in your face. You've been told no so many times. But hallelujah today, just because you asked today, the Lord said no more delays and no more denies. You shall be blessed today. You shall receive that which you asked for because you've been faithful over a few things, and I'm going to make you ruler over many. Hallelujah. Believe in the Lord. Believe in the Lord for what you're asking for. Believe him for it. Believe him for it. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah.
We say a hallelujah in advance before we even send up the words of our prayers. We give you the highest praise right now, Lord, because, Lord, we know that you're able. Lord, we know that you're able to do everything that the word that you've given us said that you will do. Your word said that you will heal. We believe you, Lord. You said that you will provide. We believe it, Lord. Lord, you said your word said that you would fight our battles. And all we have to do is stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We believe it, Lord. We say hallelujah. We say hallelujah right now. Because when we say hallelujah, Lord, our faith agrees with what is getting ready to happen. We agree in our faith that we are healed. We agree in our faith that we are blessed. We agree in our faith that we are highly favored in the Lord. Because we agree with our faith, O oh Lord, that you are our God and we are your children. Lord, we know, God, that you will honor your word. Oh, your word says, Lord, that if we ask anything in your name, hallelujah, you will do it that the Father might be glorified in you. Oh, God, get the glory out of our healing. God, get the glory out of fighting our battles. God, get the glory out of turning our lives around. God, get the glory out of opening doors that were closed in our face. God, get the glory of healing our minds, oh Lord, when we almost lost it in our glowing through. God, get the glory out of wiping these tears out of our eyes. Get the glory out of everything that you're doing for us. Because, Lord, we want to say that it was you that did it, oh God. We, we want to say that it was you that did this thing. It wasn't man that did it. But, God, you worked a miracle in our lives. And, God, right now, we thank you for the family, Lord, of Sister Maddie Williams. Lord, we know the tears are in their eyes. But, God, right now, you have sent 96-year-old Maddie Williams home, oh Lord to be in that place where we want to be, oh God. That there's no more sickness, no more death or dying. For Lord, we are the people of faith. And Lord, we know that death is not the end, oh Lord. But it's only the beginning, oh Lord, of a victorious life in you. So Lord, until we see her again right now, we pray, God, that you will continue to do what you're doing with the family right now. We pray, God, that you will continue to strengthen them, oh God. We pray, God, that you will continue to prop them up on every lean inside. Help them to see joy in the midst of this sadness, that they might give you praise. And Lord, right now, I just want to call upon the name of Brother Hudson right now. This 28-year-old 28, 28 young man who's a lawyer and a judge. We pray, God, right now, that you enlarge him his territory. Bless him coming in. Bless him going out. Grow his ministry. That's his business. Grow it right now. That you might get the glory out of the growth that he shall sustain. We claim it now. We receive it now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we count it done. Amen, amen, and amen. The Lord and praise. Saint choir.
Amen. Stand all over the house. I feel the Holy Spirit moving right now. Hallelujah. And I did not disturb the move of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we shall dismiss in the power of the moving Holy Spirit right now. Now may the grace of God, the sweet love of the Lord Jesus the Christ, and the refreshing power of the Holy Spirit, may it rest upon you henceforth and forevermore. And the blessed people of God all said, Amen. Amen. Stewards, let us be expeditious in meeting in classroom one. Amen. God bless you. Amen.